Hello, I'm JW. Uh, this time we're going to have a look at these switches and how they can be converted to LED rather than the uh, tungsten lamp that's in there as supplied. So this is the switch, and I got a whole load of these. So these came from China. I'm not sure who the manufacturer is, but they seem to be a fairly common type you can get in the usual places. And these are momentary switches, as in you can press them, but they don't actually latch in the on position, so it's purely on there, and then you can press it, and that's pretty much it. So uh, that's those. So this has a green lens, but of course different colours are available. Designed for mounting in a panel, so this part unscrews, and then your panel will go in the middle here, and then that just clamps on the back to secure it in position. And these are illuminated, and on the back here we've got the terminals, and these have the uh, three in the middle here, which is for the actual switch itself, so we've basically got a common normally open and normally closed, so in one position it's basically these two connected. When you press the switch then it's the outer two are connected, and when you release it's back to those two. And the illuminated part is the two outer terminals here, so the illumination is completely separate from the actual switching part itself. Now these ones, as it says here, are 24 volts, and I bought these for use with the CNC machine. But uh, it turns out that the actual illumination of these is a tungsten lamp. Now that's not in itself a problem, but uh, for the particular application we're going to use the uh, CNC machine, then it turns out that it actually is. Now I'll just demonstrate what the problem is, and I've got the multimeter here set on the current range, 200 uh, milliamps, uh, so it's basically just reading in milliamps and point or tenth at the end. And I've just connected it basically to the two outer terminals there, which of course are the illuminating part. And I've got 24 volt uh, supply here up on the shelf. So if you switch on the supply, then we can see that uh, it does illuminate. And we've got the current here shown as uh, 33.7 milliamps. And this is really where the problem occurs, because the driver board for the CNC machine only has up to 100 milliamps per output, which essentially means you can drive three of these from a single output. And there is also another limit of sort of 500 milliamps, I think it is, per group of outlets. But unfortunately for one of these, I want to actually drive up to six of these from a single output. Now, of course, we could use two outputs and then just sub of three and three, but it's running it fairly near the actual high level of, uh, say, the 100 milliamps. And the other thing as well is that although this is illuminated, it's uh, certainly a bit orangey and uh, yellowy in appearance, but of course that's because of the tungsten lamp inside. So what we're going to do is convert these to LED, which will make the uh, face here considerably better colour, as in more sort of towards the white end of the spectrum. And also we can reduce this 33 milliamps here considerably. Now fortunately these are very easy to modify. And uh, the first thing to do is to remove the actual button, so you just need to pry underneath, and that will just pop out like that. And you can actually remove this green piece as well, so it just clips over at the ends, and then put a uh, piece of paper in there with the whiting or symbol or whatever it is that you want on there. But essentially that just uh, clips out. And then inside we can see here, this is actually the uh, incandescent lamp down in the bottom there. So uh, if we just get the uh, wires in here, we can then connect that up. And of course this is just incandescent lamp, so there's no positive or negative really, it doesn't actually matter. And if I turn that on there, and you can see there's the illumination in there. And of course being incandescent it is fairly orangey yellow coloured, which is of course why it showed through as being rather orangey and yellowy with the green lens on the front. Now to change this to an LED, what we need to do is to remove the incandescent lamp. So if we just grip hold of the white piece, and just pull, then that actually comes out as a complete unit. And we can see at the bottom there the little contacts on either side, and those are purely for the lamp. The switching part is done by those white pieces, which actually press down with a switch mechanism further in the back. So then what we've got here is the little tiny incandescent lamp, two terminals on the back there, and you can actually remove this from the housing there. So we'll just get some pliers. Now these terminals here we can just basically twist off, and then the little lamp will actually just drop out, and it's one of these sort of grain of wheat, I think these used to be called, type of thing, so a microscopic little incandescent lamp, and of course rated to uh, 24 volts in this particular case. 
Now to replace what we're going to use is an LED. So I've got a bag of these LEDs here. This is just a three millimeter LED. It's a transparent package and this is a cold white LED. Two leads there and the long lead on this is actually the positive. Now before we fit it into this plastic holder, I'm going to just mark on the side. It doesn't actually matter which side, but I'm just going to put a mark there so we can remember which is the positive. Now the leads are already spaced and they actually fit perfectly into those two holes down there in the bottom. So what we need to do is just thread that through, making sure we've got the long lead on the red side and pull that down so the base LED goes in there exactly where the little filament bar was before. And then we'll just fold the leads over like that. And we'll just press those flat. And then what we need to do is to trim these down, so we've just got a little tab we can just fold around the two sides. And then we'll just again fold those leads over the actual sides of the plastic holder. And I'm going to do these at a bit of an angle like that because we've got two little contacts on the side, so we want to make sure that that actually mates up with those. So we'll basically just press those flat against the side of the holder. So basically like that, so positive here and then negative of course over there. And then we can fit this back into the actual holder here and if you look in the bottom there's a little tab there on the bottom there which makes up with a little slot in this piece. So this only actually goes in one way round. And uh, if we put it in there we've got the positive here on this side so uh, we can press that in there. Now there's a bit of a fiddle to get these lined up, but essentially once you've got the piece lined up, then it will just press down inside. And that just clicks in like that. And then we've actually put it this way round, so we've got the uh, positive on this side, which happens to be where it says 24 volts, so we'll just again put a uh, mark there so we know which side is which. It doesn't actually matter, I mean one side happens to have 24 volts, the other does not, but uh, as long as you know which is positive, well, of course that's actually the point. Now the only thing remaining then is to put the button back in, and so that actually just snaps in over the top, so like that. And so you can just remove that piece and put a uh, sort of legend inside, which we'll see on the CNC machine later. If this looks a bit blurry, it's because it's actually got a protective film on the front of the lens there which of course you can peel off once you've finished with it. Now that's all very well, but of course this is an LED, so we can't just shove 24 volts in there, because if we did the LED would be destroyed. So what we need is a suitable resistor to limit the current. And uh, here is a suitable resistor. This is a tiny little thing, because bearing in mind this is a microscopic little current, so smallest one we've got really. And this is a 4.7K, or 4,700 ohms. And all you're going to do here is just thread this through the wire, through the hole in the tab there. And we're going for the positive one again, so we'll have the resistor in the positive leg there. Now we're just going to fold that around. And then we'll just give that a bit of a twist there so it uh, will be fixed in position around the leg. And then we'll just put some solder there to uh, fix that in place. So that's soldered up there, and then we'll just put this heat shrink sleeving, and we'll just go over the top of that. i just trim that down a bit actually, it's a bit lengthy there. So we'll put that over the top of the resistor there, and the solder joint, and we can actually go right over the terminal on the switch as well, because of course any connection will now be made to the end here. And then we'll just shrink that in place uh, with the hot air gun, and that's now converted to LED. So uh, let's see how this looks compared to uh, this other one, which is of course as standard. Now here's just a comparison of the new LED one and the old one, which is the uh, incandescent. Uh, I think it's fairly obvious which is which, so this horrible orangey one is the incandescent and the new LED there on the right. And so the main point is they use vastly less current, and the uh, white one is actually uh, slightly brighter as well, although it's a bit difficult to see on the camera. They, uh, camera tends to make a sort of spot be in the middle of though in reality they are more evenly illuminated. So just a quick check of the current on the new LED version 
And of course, in this case, the polarity does now matter. So again, positive where the resistor is, negative on the other side. And still 24 volts. And the current in this case then, uh, 4.5 milliamps. Of course, massively less than the uh, 33 odd that we had previously. So even with six of these, it's still going to be uh, well under the rating of a single one of these that we had previously. So that's how they can be converted to LED illumination. So quite straightforward, and uh, those three millimeter LEDs fit in there perfectly. And even the whole spacing seems to be exactly right. Now you can probably buy these with LEDs in, but unfortunately that's not the ones that we ended up getting. But uh, nevertheless, uh, not too bad to swap them over. And we'll be seeing most of these buttons in the CNC build in a subsequent video. Where we are, of course, on the front panel with various legends and things put inside. And until next time, thanks for watching.